Hey, what's up everybody? Coach Lisbona here back in my gym. Man, it feels good. All right, so today's video, I am going to show you how to make a social distance game in a tournament style. And you don't have to do a tournament, but I'm going to set it up like that. And there's no limit to the amount of uh, players that you can have in this. And you'll be able to do it with two squares, be able to do it with tabletop ball. If you haven't seen my tabletop ball game, I'll put it in the description below. And you can also do it with a paddle ball version as well. And it's all one-on-one -on -one and it's all social distancing. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so the first version that I'm going to do is the tabletop version. All right, and it's going to be the same setup for the paddle ball or the same setup for the two squares. All right, so basically if you could just picture table after table going all the way down there, right, maybe about, you know, 10, 12 feet apart in between. And then on the other side of the gym, same thing. So, you know, you're talking two at each table. Um, you could probably even play three. You could do one v one v one and still social distance, but uh, the two players is the easiest way to do it. And basically, the player that would be on this side closest to the wall, they're going to be the rotating players, and, and then the player on the inside here will be the one that keeps the ball and they don't rotate. And they can keep track. They can keep points. And basically, you know, you got the music running, and when the music stops. Whatever the score is, if it was a tie, it was a tie. If somebody gets a win or a loss, that's how it goes. And then the rotating player will just leave the ball here and then they'll rotate down to the next table. So now I mentioned tournament and you don't have to do a tournament style, but the kids really like it. So basically the kids will keep track of their losses. Doesn't matter ties, doesn't matter wins. And if you're worried about kids being honest, they're going to keep each other honest with it. So after we get maybe three or four games, I'll tell them to raise their hand if they haven't lost the game. And then I'll match up all the kids that haven't lost. And then I'll have all the kids that lost only one game. I'll match all them up. And then kind of automatically the kids who start to have two or three losses will get matched up versus each other, which, you know, it's a great way to match up skill level. And at the same time, you're running a tournament. Then you let them play again and then you do the same thing. Look for the undefeated, one loss and multiple losses. And yes, some kids are, are gonna get a bunch of losses, but the more losses they have, the more they're gonna get matched up with other kids that aren't doing that well and they can maybe enjoy the game a little bit more. Okay, so normally I would never use poly spots to set up a two square court, but I just so it would show up better uh, for demonstration purposes, I, I did it this way. Of course, normally I'd use gym lines or floor tape or liquid lines, something like that, but uh, you get the idea. Okay, so it would be the same setup. Um, I would have one court here and then just keep setting up courts all the way down that end and then all the way back and same process. Player that is on the outside there would be the rotator and player on the inside here would keep the ball. Okay, so that's three games that you can play with this tournament style, but I'm going to give you two more, especially if you're dealing with middle school or high school level. You can use the paddles and a ball uh, on the table instead of just playing the tabletop ball with a, you know, a big kick ball. And you can also do the same thing with ping pong. I used to do it with uh, my fourth and fifth graders. They could handle it, and I'm sure the middle school and high school would love it. So that's five different games that you can do with this tournament style. So basically that's my tip of the day, just make sure that you're adjusting the skill level to the age group that you have. Obviously if you're talking elementary, that tabletop or the two squares would be the better way to go. You guys have a great day, see you soon.